Hello, I didn't find a lot about these batteries online, so I decided to make a couple of videos about them. This is a Pelantec US 2000C. They are 48 volt batteries with around 2 kWh of capacity. Internally, they are composed of 15 lithium iron phosphate cells. They are sold as modular battery energy storage systems, and they are often used in this region as solar energy storage for hybrid and off-grid photovoltaic systems. On countries where the peak energy cost is very expensive, they are also used for peak shaving. This can also replace any 48 volts lead acid battery system as long as the charger can be programmed to respect the, these batteries' voltages. When I have some free time, I repair some photovoltaic equipment, and lately I came across several of these batteries. Some failed in pretty scary ways. But I will leave those for later, for a future video, where we will properly tear them down and investigate the failure. On this video, we focus on repairing this one. Also, in this video, I will make a pretty dumb and expensive mistake, but I will show everything, as it might be a learning experience for others. This particular unit doesn't appear to have any physical damage, but doesn't work. To remove the cover, we need to turn it upside down and remove the screws. On top of the screen, you can see three packs of five cells each. The circuit board is the battery management system. All connectors appear to be correctly seated, so I turned the battery on and checked with the multimeter. The management system appears to turn on and off, but there is no output. There are also no weird smells and no signs of internal catastrophic failure. Here we have 49 volts as expected between the terminals. And after the current shunt resistors, all good after the first set of fuses. The polyfuses and the MOSFETs also appear ok. Finally, after the last set of fuses, there is no voltage. That means these fuses are the problem. We will need to remove the BMS to repair it. I don't have a service manual, so I don't really know the correct order to disconnect the wires, so I will improvise. I start by removing the battery power supply. Then I remove the BMS logic power supply. Then the temperature and balancing cables. I disconnect the packs from each other. The negative terminal that connects the cells. Now the power switch cable. the front panel flat cable, the negative cable from the front panel, and to make my life easier, I will also remove the positive cable to the front positive terminal. Now I was finally able to remove the PCB. The big integrated circuit on the right appears to be the main controller. The smaller TQFP in the middle appears to be the balancer, and on the left we can see the charge and discharge MOSFET switches. The negative wire from the battery packs connects here. There is a bunch of shunt resistors in parallel. Then we have more resistors, maybe they are used as ballasts. This is the protection circuitry for the MOSFETs. And these are the failed fuses. These are not normal fuses, they have a regular internal fuse element, rated for 30 amps, but, additionally, they also have a resistive heater that can be used to trigger the fuse on demand, even with no current going through it. This way, if the switching MOSFETs fail shorted, the BMS can still trigger the fuses and protect against a catastrophic failure. These batteries have an RS-232 console terminal. In the next video, I will show details about using the console terminal to check on the battery status and diagnostics. 
In the console, I saw that the battery had an overvoltage event, and I thought this caused the BMS to panic and trigger the fuses. This hypothesis was wrong, but let's keep going for now. I bought similar fuses and replaced them. I've used the nutplate to preheat the motherboard to make things easier. Then I used hot air to remove the old broken fuses. Then I soldered the new fuses on their place. The mixture of conformal coating and flux and a lot of heat will leave an ugly brown stain, but that doesn't really affect the PCB. Now I will test and make sure there is continuity across the fuses. And that all the heating elements are properly soldiered and have the correct resistance around 130 ohms. After replacing the fuses, I put the PCB back on Replace the screws and reconnected all the cables in the inverse order I disconnected them. And turn it on. We have 49 volts at the output, as expected, but unfortunately we will also have a lot of black smoke on the left side before losing the output again. On further inspection, it appears that the fuses didn't fail because the BMS triggered them. They actually failed because the MOSFET that enables the fuses failed shorted. So I removed the fuses again and I also removed the fill MOSFET. As you can see, it is indeed shorted. This is just a simple resistive switching circuit that supposedly will never turn on, only on emergencies. So I just replaced it with a similarly rated MOSFET I had on hand, because at the time the original part number was not in stock. For this kind of circuit, as long as we respect the voltages and the currents, we will be fine. It looks silly, but it works. Before I spend more money on very expensive fuses, I will just put regular fuses to check if everything works properly. The battery works. And the heater switch is disabled as expected. 
Now I will take the regular fuses off and replace them with the proper ones. The procedure is the same that I showed previously, so I won't repeat it. Instead, you can jump to the cover replacement. Before I connect them to a working storage system to test it, I will pre-charge them for a while. This controlled charge procedure will also work as a preliminary test. Whenever possible, we should equalize the voltages of the new module to add to the system and the system itself. Uh, otherwise, let's suppose we have a charged system and a discharge module. When you connect the module, you will, you will get a rush of current from the charged system to the discharge battery, possibly even triggering the overcurrent protection. When the voltage of this module became close to the other batteries, I had on a working system, I added the repaired battery to the pack. They are different models. The, the three other batteries on this stack are the older US 2000B model. So I will connect the newer one as master to hopefully minimize software incompatibilities. Unfortunately, I accidentally lost the footage of uh, the console. So I will leave the exploration of the console terminal options to the next video. It's not very clear in the image, but the newer battery appears to correctly display the status of the older batteries and everything is working as expected. I will additionally link in the description high resolution photos of the PCB in case someone needs them.